Start. Welcome everybody to the sixth lecture of digital communication systems. In today's lecture, we will talk about linear prediction filters. Basically, we will understand what linear prediction filters are, why do we use them, their advantages and disadvantages, and how to use them practically and the mathematical der derivation associated with them. So it's a very important subject that I would like you to focus on and give too much attention to it because it has many applications, not only for communication. So linear prediction, in linear prediction, basically, as the name implies, we are predicting future values of a, time, a discrete time signal is from the current and the previous values using a mathematical model. And this model is usually linear. Linear prediction is a method used, the, this, is the, this is the answer for the question, why do we use linear prediction? Linear prediction is usually used to reduce the bandwidth required to transmit PCM samples, and even sometimes reduce the storage which is really significantly important because it save you, saves you bandwidth, memory, computational resources, and consequently saves you money. It's widely, linear prediction, it's widely used in speech communications over mobile channels. Plus, it's used for, channel, uh, for, estimate, for predicting the channel parameters in, mobile, in wireless communication systems as well as in stock market prediction. There are many applications for prediction theory in stock market. For example, a, a very common problem in stock market that you need to predict the price of the stocks and bonds after a certain period of time. For example, the price of a certain stock for a certain company is $10 per stock. What, do you, can you predict what will be the value of this stock after 10 years, or after one year, or after one month? So by if you can write an algorithm that can predict and estimate that perfectly or approximately in a good manner, then you will end up having a program or a software that can be sold to companies who are interested in that, and this will generate and save them lots of money. So it's very useful. I know a friend of mine who's doing a startup on this. Uh, he's, uh, he knows this concept, prediction, predicting the future sample, f something future, predicting it uh, from the current values and the previous things. You, you hear the, the statement that says history repeats itself, or sometimes you can predict the future by understanding the present and the past. It's, the same here applies here. So, like it's very critical not only for communication but also for other fields like stock market prediction and time series analysis and this and that. So, it's very important field. So, basically, in simple terms, let's put it, the future samples which we do not donate by, uh, we x hat of n, the future predicted sample, we, we identify it by x hat of n, it can be predicted from the present samples of the discrete signals by passing x of n into the linear prediction filter shown below. So as you can see here, we have a filter, and this filter is composed of delay elements, these blocks, square blocks here, they are basically Delay elements, each block, for example, delays your message one microsecond or one nanosecond or milli, whatever, based on your system design. And you have also weights. These, these weights are the ones which define the response of the function the response of your filter, and accordingly you can predict your values. So your design goal will be to determine the exact values of these weights, W1, W2. If you are hired for a company, they will ask you to determine these values, calculate 
these values mathematically and by simulation and make sure they match with each other and they give the optimized solution. The optimized solution would be you, you will reach to a point where the error is so small between the predicted samples and the actual samples. So you have after it, this, your message after it passes the first delay element becomes x n minus one because it's delayed by one unit, and when it passes through delay elements it becomes x n minus two, and so on and so forth. So you have uh, p number of delay elements plus p number of weights. And you have here summation, you sum all of them after you assign their coefficients, which are W's here, you end up having the sample that you wanted to predict, which is X hat of N. So basically this same diagram, you can exactly represent it by a mathematical model, which is given here. This equation describes the, the prediction process. X hat of n is equal to the summation of WKs, which are the weights, the coefficients we call them, the coefficients of the filter multiplied by the current and the previous samples of the signals. For example, you, you will need to design P number of weights that can predict your sample. P here is the number of unit delay elements and also the number of weights, the number of coefficients. W represents the weights of the taps. And basically this equation is the result of this process. This x hat of n, x hat of n here, everybody with me here, this x hat of n is this equation, x hat of n. And th this term is actually, this is this, this structure. Yes, you have, here you have summation, I have summation in the equation, and you have s signals delayed by unit delays and multiplied by weights. The prediction error, now what do I care about after I, when I estimate, my, when I want to estimate the future value, I care about the error. How do you define the error? Error, you, you'll need this in many problems, wherever, any design problem. After you get your solution, you will see whether your solution is exact or not. If it's not exact, usually if it is estimation problem or prediction problem, you won't be able to exactly and precisely get the actual value. So here, you need to uh, put the actual signal value at time n, and the predicted one, which is x hat, subtract them from each other, and you get the error. So you want this error to be as low as possible so that we consider your design valid and we can use it in practical application. Otherwise, if the error is so high, then this is, the, your system is not working. Like when you are calculating your bit error rate and you get very bad curves, then th this means that your system is not working. You should fix the receiver structure so that you minimize the error. The question that may be asked is how many filter tabs are required? Depends on the error that you are targeting. For example, if you want your error to be so small, then you need larger number of tabs. If we, and this has trade-off between complexity and the error, the reliability of your system. The design objective is to choose the filter coefficients from W1 till WP, this is your task in the exam and task in the homework, to minimize the mean square error. Now we, we defined what's error, yes? If you square it like this and take the expectation, then we call this mean E is mean, expectation value, which is the mean from probability. And square, of the error. Then we call this quantity, we define it, mean square error. Yes? And this, we call it, we give it a new name, J. J is equal to the expectation of E square of N. Clear? Now, what's J? J is the error. 
when you when you put here instead of e of n concentrate with me now instead of e of n substitute its value here x of n the goal is to find the coefficients w1 and wb do you do you see the coefficients here in e you don't see them how can we reach to these coefficients and minimize them and obtain them in such a way that you get minimal error you come here you substitute instead of instead of e of n you give its value x of n minus x hat of n so it becomes expectation of x n minus x hat of n everything is square so you and you have two terms x n minus x hat of n you need to multiply them with each other what do you get when you multiply them with each other you get this term this is this is this this whole equation everybody with us is the result of x x hat minus x of n is square yes since it's square i can do it like this yes yes or no yes no not plus minus because it's it's the square for all it's not like uh, the other way so you have two minus here and you multiply them with each other of course we have n i deleted n because all of them they have n and when you distribute this here multiply this with this and then distribute here to this you get what do you get you get this exactly x square of n minus 2 x of n x hat of n minus x hat of n square so now where are the coefficients w1 w p i cannot see them till now so what do what do i need to do i know that x hat of n is come here x hat of n we defined it to be from the filter summation of w k x n of minus k yes isn't that right from k1 to b substitute this value instead of x hat of n in that equation so here is the equation wherever i see x hat of n i bought the summation value here and here so after you substitute that value inside this equation you get the final equation which is given below so it's becoming bigger and large so you have the expectation of x square of n minus summation and we distribute the expectation to all the terms as you can see this expectation was for all the it was like this yes now we distribute the expectation to all the terms each term has its own expectation and of course the constant values the coefficients we can take them out if the input signal x of t is the sample function of a stationary process Any, anybody remembers what stationary process is stationary process is any signal with mean equal zero and autocorrelation and constant autocorrelation like uh, we need that these types of signal we usually model them in wireless communication and digital communication it ha they have many practical applications actually so expectation of x of n for these types of signal is equal to zero and then the variance if you want to calculate the variance the variance of that signal becomes expectation of x square of n minus expectation of x of n all square since the mean is zero this goes to zero and the variance which is the power becomes x equal to the expectation of x square of n now use these facts to simplify this equation what do you get then the term x of n x minus this term yes you have this term what happens to it this is actually and what do you remember is what's this expectation of x of n multiplied by a shifted version of the signal itself it's correlation yes it's r of x of k yes is the autocorrelation function of x of n I, we explained it in uh, introduction to communication course 
The mean square error j can then be rewritten if you replace all the values like this with their autocorrelation, then j, which is here, this equation, we can simplify it to this form. j sigma x squared, where is sigma x? This is sigma x. Yes? This is sigma x, we found it here. Variance. Minus 2 wk rx of k. We found that this is this value rx of k, the autocorrelation. And we have here two correlation. With respect to j and k, we integrate them in one and we call it rx k minus j. In order now, now we have w's. Yes, we have the coefficients that we were looking for and seeking because we want to design them. We want to find their values. In order to find the coefficients which minimize the error, we differentiate j with respect to wk. This is a mathematical problem, yes? Calculus 2. Find the values of x and y that maximize the area, for example. How do, what do you do? You, you, you write y in terms of x, you write your equation in one variable, and you derive with respect to that variable and see the, the we call them the points, the, 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 the peaks of the point, the peaks or bottoms, which are the optimal values that can minimize or maximize. So you just derive this equation, whole equation, with respect to the coefficients, wk. If we apply the derivative to the mean square error j, we get the following equation. After you apply the derivative and derive the function, the previous function, this is math, has nothing to do with communication. It's your math knowledge. Apply it here, and you get this equation, which, which says that the summation of all the coefficients, wj multiplied by the autocorrelation function, equal to the autocorrelation auto function of k. The above optimality equation is called, it has a name, common name in the literature, Wiener-Hopf equation for linear prediction. Yes, this is the name of this equation. If anybody tells you, do you know Wiener-Hopf equation? This is the form of Wiener-Hopf equation. So, now, this form seems to be non-convenient to us. Our, we usually prefer to work with linear systems, much easier with matrices and this. So can we convert this, this to linear? Yes, we can. The summation actually gives us vectors and matrices. If you are, this is signal, when you sum it become, brings you matrices, and when you sum the scalars brings you something like vectors. So you get a new form for this equation as simple as this. Rx multiplied by W0 is equal R small x, where Rx representing this term, but in linear form, linear algebraic form. W gives this, W0, and this here, Rx here. Where Rx is a vector, W0 is a vector, Rx, R capital X is a matrix. Now you end up, you return back to linear algebra, algebra, and now you need to be able to find determinant of a matrix, inverse of a matrix, and all these things that you learned in, new, in linear algebra. All the math you have learned there, you would need it here. You understand me? Where W0 is B by one optimal coefficient vector. B by 1 means it's column, yes? B rows, 1 column. Rx is B by 1 with a correlation vector. B, this we put here transpose, so that it becomes column as well. And this is R, R capital P by P. Rx is the P by P with a correlation matrix, where R, the diagonal elements they have Rx0, the offset elements, they have Rx1, and Rx1 here has symmetry. The upper part here, the upper triangle, has symmetry with the lower triangle, those values. The value here exactly equal to the value here. The value here is exactly equal to the value here, and so on and so forth. And the diagonal elements are all equal, all. 
all equal this. So the equation that you need to remember is very simple in linear algebraic form. You, you may not need to remember this because this is much easier to deal with. Now, in order to design the filter, we need to compute the tab weights, which are Ws, which can be determined from this equation. Now, suppose you want to find just W0. What's W0 if you have equation? You say Rx divided by R capital X, but there is not, in linear algebra, there is no matrix division. We don't deal with, how do you divide over a matrix? We don't have such thing. We deal with inverses, with inverse. So W0, when you, put, when you want to put W0 on the left side of your equation, then becomes W0 becomes equal to Rx inverse multiplied by R small x. This is how, and this is usually what you need to design in most of the cases. The minimum mean square value of the prediction error is obtained by substituting the values W0 into J. Now you obtain W. Yes, you obtain W that minimizes the error. I tell you calculate the error, the minimum error that you have obtained due to this design. You just say J min, we found it previously derived it to be sigma square minus Rx transpose multiplied by Rx inverse Rx. Note that this value, this value is exactly equal to W, W naught. Yes, why is that? Why you can't take the transpose of the Rx? Trans, you can't, uh, Rx capital? No, you Small? No, 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 here we defined it already transposed. Here we should put transpose here. It's already column okay. here. Yes, it's not it's there. Given. Yeah, it's given that it's transpose. So then after you substitute these values here and do the necessary calculation, you end up calculating the error due to these coefficients. So this is basically what you are required to do when you are asked to design a prediction filter, to find basically the coefficients of that filter. So is that clear, is that understood? Now let's move to the practical understanding with real examples. Example, suppose we have a stationary process signal x of t, yes, which has the following values for its autocorrelation function. Rx of zero, Rx of one, Rx of two, Rx of three. As you can see, the values are decreasing as you increase the value inside the function k. Why, why is that? Because when the value is zero, the signals are exactly matching on top of each other. If two signals are exactly matching into, uh, uh, on top of each other, what's the correlation between them? Maximum, you just they add like this. But when they make any shift, when there is a shift, they no longer produce maximum when you sum them up. Yes? And this value inside the Rx is basically represents the delay, the shift. The more shift you have, the less correlation you have. And accordingly, the, the value will be less. The value of the peak will be less. C, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. Now what's required is to calculate the coefficients of an optimal linear prediction involving the use of three unit delays. So from this you can know that how many coefficients you have? Three, because I have three unit delays. Three is very important here, because if I give you, for example, two, the solution will be completely different. If I give you five, you will not be able to solve it by hand. You must go to MATLAB and solve it. Yes, because you cannot find the inverse of a matrix five by five. You didn't learn this in yeah, linear algebra. You just, you can calculate up to, if it's the matrix due to some pattern, you can calculate four by four in some cases. 
But when the dimension of the matrix increases, it becomes really hard for you to follow up with the calculations. After you calculate these weights, the question is asking about calculating the variance of the resulting prediction error. Sigma square. So, what do you need to do? Since these Rx capital are given, you can, ca you can find the matrix Rx, yes? Uh, Rx, you must be able to remember uh, the coefficients, how are they sorted inside the matrix. It's a diagonal Rx0, the offset from column or row side, Rx1, Rx2, Rx3, and you fill the matrix. So after you fill ma the matrix, you get this. Rx0, Rx1, Rx, until Rx, P minus 1. Tamam? So this is exactly what the matrix you get. You don't have 0.4. You don't bought it. Because you start from 0 till the last. While in Rx, the vector, you start from 1 and end at P. So you start from 0.8, 0.6, 0.4. W0, we all know that it's equal to Rx inverse multiplied by Rx small. And then you just need to find what's, what, where is the difficulty here? You just need to find the inverse of Rx, which is a mathematical problem. And then multiply it by Rx here. Rx is a column, yes? Because here there is transpose. You do this multiplication and you get this vector. What's this vector? W0. These are the three coefficients you have for your filter. Given the information, given the autocorrelation. Now, the error, the minimal error, is equal to you get Rx0 minus Rx transpose Rx inverse multiplied by Rx. Rx0, you know its value, it's 1. Here Rx0, it's given here 1. And minus Rx transpose, this value, we already found it from the previous question. Don't repeat the same calculation again because it will take time. W0, you put exactly this column you found here. You substitute it here. And with Rx transpose, when you multiply a row by a column, you get one value. Yes? 1 pi 3 multiplied by 3 pi 1, you get 1 by 1. So 1 minus that, this value, gives you the minimum error variance. This is basically how do you calculate the coefficients of the filter and the minimal variance and Basically, all what you need to know is what, what's linear prediction, why do you use it, and how to use it, and how to use the equations in order to find the coefficients of the filter, and after that, find the error. So this is basically what linear prediction is. I stop here, and we continue after five minutes. Thank you very much.